guys, welcome back to another college football video. Today's video will be on the Utah's preview and predictions on their year. I've already done Oregon and Baylor. It's time to do Utah, and Utah's a team that I have a really excitement for. But before we get into that, hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below. If you like college football, this is the place for you all throughout the off season, all throughout the season. This is the place for you. And if you're watching this video, you're probably a comfortable fan, and you're probably not subscribed to my channel, since only 99% of y'all are not subscribed to my channel who watch these videos. So go and subscribe, because I post comfortable content all the time. Guys, I will not be able to post um, in very recently, because I'm going to the beach to take a little break from all this. And then I'll, when I get back, it'll be like 70, 65 days, and I'll be grinding for y'all. All right, let's start off with talking about Utah. Utah's quarterback, Cam Rising, threw for 2,493 yards, 20 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions. He came in for a backup. He was a backup quarterback to start the year, earned his starting job, and so he only started half the game, and he put up great numbers. And I could see he's the starting quarterback this year, and I could see him leading them all the way to a Pac-12 championship again. He's that good. And then you have what I can call the best running back in Utah history and that's Tavon Thomas he's the best running back in Utah history Tavon Thomas had 1,108 yards and he had a 5.4 average per carry with 21 touchdowns 21 touchdowns in the running back is absolutely crazy good the 1,108 yards is also good if you have above a thousand yard season you're doing something right the other line for them is really really good and now let's talk about the receiving core but the main receiver on this team wasn't a receiver it was a tight end his name was Brant Queeth, he had 50 receptions for 611 yards, 6 touchdowns with a 12.2 average per catch. This is a tight end too, so when you're a tight end doing these things, you're an absolute Kyle Pitts type guy. But the thing is, he's not. He can block. He's kind of like Pat Fryermuth. He can block. He can also catch really well, and that's what I like about him. And then the main wide receiver will be Davon Velp. He had 23 receptions for 389 yards with one touchdown and 6.9 average per catch. So he's almost averaging 17 every time he catches the ball. And he was a freshman, so he didn't get many reps last year, but he'll be the number one receiver this year because he only had 23 receptions last year. I saw a bunch of hype into him. And then we talk about the defense, where the defense is in and the defensive tackle. Defensive end, Van Fillinger had 23 solo tackles, 5.5 sacks as a freshman. When you're getting 5.5 sacks as a freshman on the de on the end, you're doing something r crazy right. And this dude was absolutely a phenomenon to watch last year because he wasn't the number one defensive end. They had another one that got drafted this year, and this year will be his year to shine. And then they had the defensive tackle. His name is Junior Tefamu, who had 22 solo tackles. Four and a half sacks, and he was also a freshman. So we have one last sack, but he's a defensive tackle. Even harder to get sacks there. Buff three is a, a great year. Guys, this defensive end core, defensive tackle core is going to be absolutely crazy. And then they had a lot of noise in the transfer portal. They got a linebacker from Florida. In Florida, they play first week of college football. Linebacker from Florida, Muhammad Diabiety. And then they got a wide receiver from Syracuse and Landon Morris, who hasn't played over there. And then they got a linebacker from Stanford and Gabe Reed. That's really good. That They make a lot of noise in the transfer portal. I mean, the recruiting class was decent. They didn't get as much as they really, really needed to go to keep their going forward. But I say it wasn't bad. They ranked 36th in the nation, and they picked up a four-star linebacker, four-star corner, Landon, Lander Barbin. They got a four-star quarterback. He's going to be a starter in one year come, and his name is Notech Johnson. And then you got a four-star running back, Jalen Glover. I absolutely love this running back. He's going to be an absolute stud. But I feel like the main piece is the running back at Tavon Thomas. He's such a good running back. He's literally going to lead the team. And Cam Rising and Devin Vey are going to be an absolute awesome duo. They're going to be they're going to average for over a thousand yards with each other. Cam Rising is going to be well over three thousand yards, and then Devon Vey is going to be well over seven hundred receiving yards. Good for a sophomore. Guys, I'm super excited about this Utah season. I'm about to break down their schedule one by one and pick my predictions. As you know, I have Oregon going 11 and 1. I have Baylor going 10 and 2. And I cannot wait to see the Utah schedule because as you know, in the last few years I'm like Utah is not very good. They're overrated and they're not going to be super good. Now let's get right into the scheduling. They do versus Florida week 1 and they are 2 point favorites and I think Utah's going to cover. I think Utah's going to beat Florida by 7, only 7. 
Not anymore. It's going to be a one-possession game. Utah's going to win, and now Utah's winning. Oh, they're going to beat SSUU, so they're now 2 and 0, oh, and they're going to sneak by San Diego State with a 10-point win. So they're 3 and 0, oh, and then at Arizona State they're easily going to win 4 and 0. Oh. Oregon State is going to be an easy one. Now they're 5 and 0. Oh. I have UCLA versus Utah ranked right here. UCLA is unbeaten probably right now. I absolutely love UCLA, but I think Utah squeaks by with like a three-point win right here. And now they are 6-0 and going into the biggest game on their schedule against USC. I think Utah is going to sneak by with a three-point win and going to be 7-0. and I think they are going to beat USC because I don't think USC is going to be you know, ready for Utah, because Utah's really, really good. At 7-0, and they're going to beat Washington State. Now they're 8-0. and They're going to beat Arizona 9-0. and They're going to beat Stanford 10-0. and As if y'all have watched my Oregon YouTube video, you know that I had Utah beating them. So they are 11-0, and and then they beat Colorado, and they're now 12-0, and and they go to the Pac-12 Championship and win, and then they reach the college football playoff. Utah's going to make the college football playoff this year, and I have a very strong feeling and opinion about that. Utah is just different this year. Their hardest game is probably going to be Florida or USC or UCLA. I think they're going to beat Oregon pretty convincingly, probably by like 10 or 17, somewhere in that range. And that's going to be Oregon's fall. And then Oregon's not going to make the Pac-12 championship. But I feel like the only game that I have them maybe losing is the UCLA game. UCLA is always ready for Utah. And I feel like it's going to stay that way this year. So, yeah, I just think it's going to be easy like that. And I don't know. Tell me what y'all think about Utah this year because this is the end of the video. I hope you liked it. Hit the like button, subscribe, and comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, I'll see y'all guys in the next college video.